Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla, and if you're not new, thanks for coming back. Always happy to have you. I am super excited for today's video. I feel like I haven't been able to take the time to sit down and do a video like this, which is like a recommended list video in a very long time. Um, I feel like it's mostly been like reading vlogs and reviews and things like that. So I'm excited to put together a list of books for you guys that I think will help you out if you're trying to finish out your Goodreads goal or your TBR reading goal for 2022. Because believe it or not, we're at the end of 2022. If you're new here, I like to do a lot of book, lifestyle, reading, some Disney content here on this channel. So if you like any of those things, make sure to hit that subscribe button, stick around, give this video a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let's dive into the books that I recommend if you need to close out your TBR or your Goodreads goal. I wanna preface this by saying, I like and dislike the idea of a reading goal. I think it's always a good thing to be like working toward and trying to push yourself to keep reading and keep up with it and make it a habit. However, the past couple years, I know it has stressed me out really, really badly to set a reading goal and I've set really unrealistic reading goals and I haven't met my reading goal since 2017. So since for five years, I have not met my reading goal. Um, this is the first year in five years that I've met my reading goal and likely will exceed it. I set myself a goal of 30 books. Um, today is November 30th and I've read 29 so I have to read one more book in the next month and I know I will definitely do that. I know it can be stressful. Don't pressure yourself to read a certain number of books. Read to enjoy. If it's stressful for you, don't do it. Don't set a goal. Don't do anything like that. But if you like the challenge and if you really want to push yourself, this video is for you. Let's talk about some books you can read to finish that out. I also want to say that I did not, for this list, come up with really short books. I more picked books that move really quickly or suck you in that you don't notice you're reading, that you can, like, if you have two or three hours or four hours or whatever, or a lazy day where you're not doing anything, which in the holidays I know is probably not likely, but if you do have a chunk of time where you can just get lost in a book, these books will suck you in and move really, really quickly. So you'll get through them before you even know it. And some of them are a bit shorter, so you'll find a balance there. <clears throat> a lot of these books I've read in the past, so I don't have them here with me. The first book I wanna get out of the way because I actually haven't read it, but it is on my TBR to read by the end of the year, and I think it will be pretty easy to do. Um, and I'm actually really, really excited. I bought this book back in July. Um, I went on a girl's trip and we watched the Titanic and then we got kind of on a Titanic kick and I bought this book. Um, it is The Watch That Ends the Night, Voices from the Titanic by Alan Wolf. It says it's a novel, but it's a novel in verse. I almost said a novel in prose. It's a novel in verse. It's a poetry collection that tells the story of the sinking of the Titanic from different characters different people you hear from the iceberg you hear from I think the Titanic itself but like I said it's a novel in verse so it is gonna go super quickly like these pages this this isn't a heavy lift intense dense read it's going to go pretty quickly so I'm planning on reading this either next week or the week after I'm planning a 24 hour reading vlog like a 24 hour readathon style vlog so make sure you stick around to see that and this will be on the TBR for that. This book I'm also going to say right now because I haven't finished it yet I am in the middle of it right now and it's already sucked me in it's moved pretty quickly and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, it is a fictionalization of this woman named Audrey Rose Wadsworth who has fallen in love with Jack the Ripper in London in the 1880s. Um, and she is a like forensic medicine student but she's a woman and that's not normally accepted for the time period so she's kind of like secretly studying forensic medicine and autopsy under her uncle um, but she meets Jack the Ripper and falls in love with him kinds of thing while they're exploring murders and investigating these murders. I've only been reading this for a day and I am 125 pages in which is almost halfway um, so it is a bit of a shorter book it's only about 300 pages and it moves super fast like I feel like so many events are happening she's investigating all these new murders that are cropping up that it'll just suck you in and move pretty quickly. 
now we're going to get into some of the other ones that I think would be really great fast reads that I read in the past year or two that sucked me in were super easy to read. The first is Inheritance Games and I think I don't know if I did a reading vlog for it but I definitely did a review. I truly can't remember but I was sick back in June and I had started Inheritance Games like a couple days before I got sick. On my sick day, I literally devoured Inheritance Games. I read it in probably like two or three hours. It sucked me and I needed to know what happened next. And I literally went and I bought the sequel that day in full illness, made my boyfriend bring me to Barnes and Noble to buy the next book. So Inheritance Games is a kind of, not a whodunit mystery, but it is a mystery where this girl who I am forgetting her name, a Avery, I think her name's Avery, a very risky gamble, Avery, I think it's Avery Graham. This girl, Avery, um, receives a letter that she has inherited this, like, billionaire from Texas, his whole estate, like, everything that he owns. He, she has inherited it for, like, seemingly no reason, bypassing all of his kids, his grandkids, to give it to this seemingly stranger but the stipulation is that she has to live in his house in his mansion for one year and i think it's worded like she has to survive one year living in his house so when she gets to his house she is trying to figure out this puzzle or this mystery about why she was chosen instead of all of these other people to inherit his billions of dollars some people are trying to kill her uh, to try and inherit instead if she doesn't um, survive that one year in his mansion so it's a very like fast paced very very like and captivating it's a very fast-paced thriller a lot's going on a lot of moving parts it just kind of sucks you in um, and you just kind of need to know what's happening what's happening it's a total page turner it is a trilogy and now the third book it third and final book is out of the series i also wouldn't be surprised if i read this by the end of the year it's the final gambit by jennifer lynn barnes this could also be read by the end of 2022 because they move so quickly the same thing with the second one i read in about two days because i just had to know what was happening the next book i don't have here and i read last year and i don't think i did a review but i read a court i read kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco this has been literally my top series this year i read the last two books this year kingdom of the feared which i just reviewed and did a reading vlog for here on my channel and uh kingdom of the cursed is the second one and that was the first book i read in 2022 the whole series but especially the first book just sucks you in it is such a cool concept in my other vlogs i talk all about it um but it is the it is one of the coolest story concepts i've ever heard it is a new adult fantasy novel it's a little spicy a little smutty um about the seven deadly sins representing the princes of hell and this girl amelia her sister is murdered and she tries to summon a demon to help her figure out who murdered her sister and she actually accidentally ends up summoning one of the princes of hell um, and she goes on this whole adventure to try and discover why her sister was murdered um, and other witches in Italy are being murdered and to figure out why this is happening and to stop it. And it is so good. The banter, the setting, the writing, the characters, I loved it all. It literally took me like a day to read. It was so good. This book I recently reread and reviewed on my channel as well. And I read that book in also less than a day. Um, once I started, I remember it sucking me in the first time that I read it, but it took me a little bit longer. And then this time, when I reread it, I was done for. I was sucked in immediately, read the book in a, literally a four hour sitting, read for four hours straight. And that is A Court of Thorns and Roses. I also reviewed this book on my channel this year. I feel like you probably know the plot, but it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. If you haven't read it, it is a fae Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, and this set in this world of Prithian, um, where humans and the fae are separated, and this human girl, Feyre, accidentally kills a fae unknowingly and she is taken 
to the Fey world to live out her days in exchange for his life. And she ends up with the High Lord of the Spring Court, um, who is cursed right now and is dealing with and trying to rectify this curse in his land. It is so good. It is not terribly long. Um, it's probably like 400, well, it's a little bit longer. It's 450-ish pages, I want to say. But it is just so good and so like fast paced, fast moving. It just sucks me in. I think it also was such a quick read for me this year because I'd already read the story, but even before, I think it's a story that moves so well and you just wanna know what happened. This one I have on my list because I also wanted to try and read it by the end of the year. And I think it's a pretty good like TBR reading goal finisher outer because it is much beloved and I think we've all already read it so it should be an easy reread and that is Harry Potter number one Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I have so much nostalgia for the first three Harry Potter books I think every time I've tried to reread the series I've at least read the first three but the first one in particular has just like such like every time I read it it's like a fresh rush of the magic and I just love reading the first Harry Potter book so if you need a quick TBR it is a middle grade it's not super dense it's not super heavy it's mostly plot and you're whisked away into this like nostalgic magical world which for me when I need to get sucked in re into reading that's a really easy way to do it to go to a nostalgic comforting world just kind of escape a little bit if I can get into an escapist book I am gonna be set to read it within a day so I really wanted to reread the first Harry Potter. I think it would be an easy reread. It's middle grade, it's shorter. Um, so that could be an easy one to knock off another off of your TBR. This one is not my usual vibe. I don't normally read books like this. Um, I mean, I don't dislike them, but I don't necessarily pick them myself. But I did have to read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave for my book club this year. And it is like a mystery thriller book and I really liked it honestly um the ending was a little far-fetched for me but it did the pacing was again super quick it was a page turner to try and get to the end see what the outcome was going to be so it moved really really quick and it was a bit shorter I think it was less than 300 pages so it was an easy thing to read in a day I think I read it in probably like three days because I just read it on my train commutes to work I just was reading because I had to know what happened like I had to get to the end and see what the outcome was gonna be so I think it was that would be another really great one if you need a fast-paced and a shorter read I think that accomplishes both it's a, a shorter page limit and it moves really really quickly and you want to know what happens at the end so you're gonna keep reading but it's about this girl who's or this lady I should say whose husband disappears and he leaves behind a letter that just says protect her referring to his daughter his company has been found out for like tax fraud or insider trading or something like that and he has gone off the grid he has fled the country they don't know where he is they haven't they don't hear from him ever um and she has to figure out what she's protecting his daughter from and how to do that without having a husband anymore. And it's just kind of a wild ride as to what her husband has been running from for so long and what she has to do to protect his daughter and that last promise she made to him. Okay, sorry, I got distracted by my Spotify wrapped. I just have to point out that my top song was Dos Oruguitas from Encanto. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for myself. Okay. Along the same lines as a mystery thriller that really like I feel like took the world by storm this year and last year was Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'm not the biggest Colleen Hoover fan. Honestly, I haven't read a lot of books by Colleen Hoover. I've actually only read this one, but I think because it was so fast-paced and it was so gripping and you had to know what happened because it was freaking nuts was Verity and I think it would be a good book to put on the TBR if you need a quick read. I literally read Verity in one day while I was at the beach with my family from start to finish. I literally isolated myself to finish this book because I needed to know what happened. It was craziness. However, that being said, 
I will also say there are some trigger warnings for that book because there was some stuff that was pretty messed up and made me feel a little bit like Ugh. so just be warned of that but it is a super fast read crazy things are going on you're trying to figure out what's happening if you don't know verity is about this girl named lowen who is commissioned to finish a really popular book series from this very famous author verity who's had some sort of accident so she goes to verity's house to like read more about the universe and start writing and all this stuff and verity who's supposed to be like paralyzed or like kind of like a vegetable is moving like and it's like watching people and it's at the top of the stairs and it's like hiding knives under her bed and then she also finds this other manuscript that Verity wrote that is like hidden but talks about how she potentially murdered one of their daughters crazy things wildness very fast paced finish it in less than a day this book is very fast it did destroy me I literally started on a plane ride read it for the rest of the day because I just I had to get to the end and I knew that something really really sad was coming and I just like I had to finish this book it was Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller oh my god it is the story of Achilles and Patroclus but it is kind of, I, I think a twist on it um it's told from Patroclus's point of view and how him and Achilles fall in love as they're like kind of growing up together and Achilles is becoming a hero and then of course it ends the way the myth of Achilles ends and it is devastating but it is so beautifully written it covers a lot of time but you don't even notice that time passing it covers like 20 years but it just moves so quickly and it flows so beautifully and you just root for Achilles and Patroclus and you just you just want to see them have a happy ending if you have a soul if you have a heart you will cry this is another fantasy that I reread last year um, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. It is her YA fantasy series. It is a tr trilogy-ish. There was a like novella that came out in another spin-off book that is coming out soon I think. The Stolen Heir. But it is this um, high court fantasy book about Jude who has been taken by the fairies um she had mortal parents who were murdered because her mother had a kid with a fairy a red cap i think and um he takes all of their children to go live in the fairy world and jude is trying to find her place she wants to be a knight in the fairy world and she ends up kind of manipulating this prince um who is to take the throne um and ends up i'm having a little adventure perhaps a romance along the way um it's very good it is very fast paced like all of these books they move pretty quickly i loved jude and cardin i loved the setting that i found the plot so interesting i found jude such an interesting character i just wanted to hang out with her so i kept reading to hang out with her basically uh, it was very good then i have three more for you and then we are done with this video for today um the next is like a, a light-hearted romance that i read really fast and it is bringing down the duke by evie dunmore this is the first in her league of extraordinary women series um don't remember the characters names but i do know that it was about this girl who was um studying at oxford she was in the first class of women at oxford and she was part of the women's suffragist movement in england to get voting rights for women and she is tasked with convincing like nobles and dukes to join their cause and vote in parliament for their cause she is assigned this duke that is so staunchly against women's rights and she has to kind of like woo him and persuade him and there's like a christmas scene which is great for this time of year or like a winter estate scene it's snowy they have this like whirlwind romance that's really passionate and fast moving and quick and just like just so lovely like it was of course has the romance novel like back and forth of like oh i love him like i can't be with him i love him but overall i love that book and it was just it was just a, a happy read like a happy quick read i'm just gonna go back in time hang out in london and it was a great time next we have a ya thriller and this is one of my favorite books ever and i'm like now thinking about it and i'm really mad i don't think i included it on my 
top 10 favorite books of all time and it definitely should be on there and that is truly devious by maureen johnson it is her ya mystery thriller series about this girl who goes to this academy in vermont for like gifted or special people and she is trying to solve like a 100 year old mystery murder disappearance of this um like billionaire who runs the school his wife and their daughter and she goes to the school to try and solve this mur this murder this mystery but there are also murders cropping up at school from with her fellow students and so she's trying to solve two murders and two mysteries at once that are kind of like mirroring each other and it's a three book series but the first one she's discovering all these clues and leaning into the story and learning more and more and discovering things that it's just like you are flying through the book without even realizing it and it was so so good hi friends i completely forgot to finish this video um i just got caught up doing other things but i had one more book to talk to you guys about for quick reads to wrap up your tbr uh, for 2022 if you're trying to meet a reading goal and i almost took it off the list actually because i recently finished stalking jack the ripper but we'll talk about it anyway that book that the last book that i wanted to share with you guys is the dark descent of elizabeth frankenstein it's a bit shorter it's about 280 pages maybe even a little bit less um and it is a by Kirsten White. It is a retelling of the story of Frankenstein from Elizabeth Frankenstein's perspective, who is like the girlfriend wife of Frankenstein, of Victor Frankenstein, um, and how she grew up with him and how she always kind of saw these dark aspects of him, but she married him anyway. Um, and there's a really like cool pivotal twist at the end. It's a very fast paced, very quick read. It, read. I love Kirsten White and her writing. Um, so I just get sucked into her worlds that she creates and it is a fantastic kind of spooky read if you need like a moody thriller read that's gonna suck you in. And that is all that I have for you guys for books to wrap up your TBR. Um, by the time this video goes up, I think there's a couple of weeks left in December. So hopefully you can get that reading done and feel good and hit your goals. Like I said, you don't need a goal. You don't need to read a certain number of books to feel accomplished. As long as you're reading good books and you're happy with what you're reading, that is all that matters. But I will see you in my next one. Have a wonderful day wherever you are and I'll see you soon. Bye. Would you stay till the morning light?